ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hear that? It's the sound of a mighty American Airlines flagship taking off. You know, being an American Airlines pilot is an exciting job. And now, thanks to Cheerios, you too can share in that fun. Because inside every specially marked package of Cheerios, you'll now find a free American Airlines air travel game. Yes, a free airplane game for you and your friends. Complete with instructions, four airplane playing pieces, a spinner, and two playing boards. You're the pilot in this exciting air travel game. And you play on a real American Airlines system map that adds to the fun. On the back, you'll find another paper game board with lots of important information every American Airlines pilot must know. So how about it? You be the pilot. Get your complete American Airlines air travel game today, free in Cheerios. Look for the special Cheerios package with a flying airplane on front. Supplies are limited, so hurry. Ask for Cheerios today, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? Hooray! Dan Reed, nephew of the Lone Ranger, had ridden into the town of Granite Hill from their temporary camp in the nearby hills to buy some supplies at the general store. Mike Guffey, the storekeeper, was, as usual, in a talkative mood. Uh, there you are, son. I guess I got everything you ordered in there. Thanks, Mr. Guffey. Mm. Sounds like somebody's dog got hurt. Uh, better go see. Come on. You just do kick my door. You're a big bully, that's what. Uh, go on home before I give you the same treatment. Go on, beat it. That's that ornery Al Saybrook again. Me. Toughest boy in town. Go on. Takes after that mean, no-good pa of his. Oh, well, don't just stand there looking at me. I said to beat it, didn't I? Go on home. No, I have to go find my dog. He went that way. All right, I guess you're asking for it, so I'll just... Hey, hold on there. Hey, come back here, son. He's bigger than you. I'll be all right. Let the boy alone. You had no right to kick his puppy. Huh? Hey, who do you think you are? My name's Dan Reed. I'm Teddy Coates, and he's Al Sabro. Yep, that's me. And I can lick any fella in town, too. So you better not butt in, Reed. Teddy, you'd better go find your puppy. Now, wait a minute. I say he's going to head for home and forget that dog. And if he doesn't, I'll... I'll go home like he says, Dan. I'll go with you to find the puppy. Come on. Oh, no, you don't. You can take this. Hey, I'll say what's at it again. Hit that kid in the back. Yeah, he did. Sure. And now I'll hit you right in the eye. Better not try. We ought to make Saybrook stop. I'll let him alone. That button's got nerve to stand up to hell. I'll teach him not to butt in. Take this. Hey, you asked for this fight? Oh. Why, I'll show you, you little shrimp. Hey, how do you like that? You've been lucky so far. Now I'll really let you have it. You missed me. Oh. I'll get you for this. I'll get you. If you want to stop, say so, Al. I won't stop till I show you. I'll get you right All now. All right, then. Oh. Oh. No, no, I've had enough. You hit me when I wasn't looking. I'll get even for this, you'll see. Golly, I'm sorry he feels that way about it. Thanks, Dan, for sticking up for me like that. I couldn't see him pick on a small boy like you, Teddy. You're too young to defend yourself. You still got your packages inside, son. Now, better come into the store and clean up before you hit the trail for home. Come on. (laughs) 
Later that afternoon, Dan arrived at the camp in the nearby hills, which he shared with Toto and the Lone Ranger. He told them about the fight with Al Saybrook. Al's father, Stu Saybrook, was one of the toughest men in the territory. A man he knocked down in the cafe fight, died from the blow, and Steve turned out law. He's wanted right now by the law. That's why we're here. Golly. Al has been on his own since his father left Granite Hill. He thinks it's smart to follow in his father's footsteps. Not, not good. Dan, you watch out for Al Saybrook. If him say him, get even. Oh, I'm not afraid of him, Tonto. <laughs> we know you aren't, Dan. But Al won't meet you in a fair fight now. He'll try to get even, as he calls it, in some underhanded way. Yes, Tonto's right. Al Saybrook will bear watching from now on. Meantime, Al Saybrook left Granite Hill unobserved. He followed the same trail that Dan had taken. But when he came to the point where the trail branched from the river, Al took a less traveled trail that continued along the riverbank. It was sundown when he reached a shack which was well hidden in a small grove of trees overlooking the river. Oh, oh, dear. oh easy. Yeah, what brings you here, Al? Oh, hi, Pa. I come up to talk to you. Well, come on in. Sure. Oh, that's your boy, is dude. Yep. This is Al I've been telling you about. Well, who's he, Pa? Sit down, boy. Sure. <laughs> Hey, uh, I asked you who... I heard you, I heard you. That's Dave. Him and me's joining up. Hey, now, what's happened to you, Al? Looks like you fell off your horse and landed on your face. Uh, I didn't fall off my horse. The fact is, a big tough fellow in town jumped me and beat me up. He's much bigger than I am. <laughs> he sure must be a mighty big maverick, Dave. Shut up, Dave. <laughs> who was this boy, Al? Call himself Dan Reed. What I really come for, Paul, was was to borrow a gun from you. A gun? What for? I got my reasons. Well, maybe you have. I got to know what they are. I'm going gunning for that Reed fellow that beat me up. That's why. <laughs> Al's going to make a good outlaw, Stu. Look, if the boy wants to work along with us, when we get a gang together, it'll be all right with me. But I don't then want... Then you'll to... give me a gun? No, I won't. Oh, but, Paul... He's pa, got to I... start sometimes, Stu. Look, Dave, if I give Al a gun right now, he'll go slinging lead at that young maverick who beat him up. Maybe he'll get caught by the sheriff, and they'll make him squeal about where I am, you savvy? Oh, but I wouldn't squeal on you. Ah, they'd make you talk, Al. And anyway, I don't want any son of mine hunted down for a killing. I got suspicions about that Reed fella. Suspicions? What do you mean? Well, just before he left town... I saw him talking to the sheriff. Talking to the sheriff? Yeah. Huh? I kind of think he picked a fight with me on purpose, thinking maybe I'd get word to you and you'd try to do something about it. Oh, wait a minute. You got suspicion? You see him talking to the sheriff? I don't get what you mean. Look, Pa, what I mean is, I think he's spying for the law, that's what. Why, you crazy galoot? Maybe that boy trailed you here. Oh, no, he didn't. I made sure of that. He left town first. He did come along the main trail as far as the fork, though. Then he headed down out toward the foothills. Hey, Stu. That isn't so good. If that Reed fellow really is yeah, trying to... what you just told me, Al, things are different. Then you let me have a gun? No. But I'll see that something's done about Reed. Like what? In the morning, I'll have Dave go with you to the fork in the trail. You can watch there for that boy to show up. Oh, then Dave can dry gulch him from ambush. No, I want that boy taken alive and brought here to me. Oh, no, Pa. I'll get him to talk and tell us what the sheriff is up to. I can tell you one thing, Al. Dan Reed will never jump you again. I promise you that. The following morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto prepare to leave the camp. Steady, Silver. Easy. There. That cinch is tight enough. <laughs> Silver seems to think so, anyway. Yeah. Be ready, Kimasabe. Good. Now, then, we're going to search the hills in an effort to find Stu Saybrook's heart out. We'll be back before sundown. And uh, you stay here in camp. Well, I was thinking of taking Victor to town to the blacksmith's shop. 
One of his shoes is loose. Ooh, then you'd better have it fixed as soon as possible. But uh, don't hang around town. Come right back here. Yes, sir. And keep your eyes open when you're in town, Dan. All right, let's go, Toto. Easy, Easy silly, big fella. Easy, fella. One silver. Come up, come. Later that morning, Dan set out for town. He rode at a leisurely pace along the main trail. As he approached the fork in the trail near the river, he was suddenly startled by a shot. Golly, hold, 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 Victor. Hold, hold, hold. I'll move you. We got you covered. Come on, Buck. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Say, Brooke. That's right. It's me. Hey. You mean to say this is the fellow you were telling us about? Yeah, that's him, all right. <laughs> Don't tell me that young maverick beat you up. He's younger and smaller than you are. Well, you know what's good for you, Dave? You'll start him up the trail to the shack like Pa said to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all right. Get yeah, going, son. Go on. All right. Come on, Victor. Get up. Come on, get up there, boy. Get up. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the happy, happy people have to say. Wee-dee-dee, oh, wee-dee-dee, and do-do-do, and okay, okay. And that's the truth. Take California champions, for instance. Now, way out west, you'll hear us talking about a quarterback we call Van Brocklin, a passing star with Wheaties style who throws that ball a country mile. And Duke Snyder, too, is a West Coast man, a fancy slugger, and a Wheaties fan who takes his bat and scares them all when he knocks the hide right off the ball. Now, these two champions know that there's big energy in their favorite cereal because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do, 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 and okay, okay. to continue. It was earlier in the afternoon than they had expected when the Lone Ranger and Toto returned to their camp. Finding that Dan hadn't returned from town, they decided to go meet him. As they moved slowly along the trail, the Lone Ranger spoke. Look, Toto, Dan's trail is easy to follow because of Victor's loose shoe. Wait, Kimasabi. Oh, sir. Oh, Oh, father. Look there. Sign show that Victor stopped here. Hoof prints of two horses come out of bushes. Yes, that's right. Victor's trash go up the river trail with the others. Ah, that's strange. That's savvy. Hmm. I wonder if... Al Saybrook. I wouldn't put it past him to he try to... Sabi. Yes? You think Saybrook boy won the riders who stop here with Dan? It's possible. Anyway, Dan wouldn't have any reason to ride up that river trail with anyone. As he was forced to go. Not right. All right, we'll follow those tracks and see what's going on. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Al and Dave arrived at the shack with Dan and took him inside to face Stu Saybrook, the outlaw. Well, Stu, <laughs> here he is. What? Al, you mean to tell me this little runt's the one who beat you up? Remember, he's the fellow who was talking to the sheriff. Yeah, that's so. What were you talking to the sheriff about, Reed? He asked what Al and I were fighting about. That's Don't all. Don't believe him, Paul. He's a dirty little spy, that's what. We are, huh? No. You're lying. Take this. Oh, oh what a shot. Oh, are you going <laughs> to let him knock me down? Ah, you make me sick. It served you right. Stay away from him from now on. I'll deal with that frisky maverick. Well, what are we going to do with him, Stu? Can't let him go. Don't worry. I don't intend to let him go. We'll keep him here in the shack till I figure out what I want to do with him. He knows too much for his own good. The Lone Ranger and Toto followed the river trail until they came to the top of a hill. Puzzle, puzzle. 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 Easy. Uh, why we stop here, Kimasabi? I want to use my binoculars, Toto. If Saybrook has a hideout up this way, he may have others with him. They'll be watching the trail. Mm. Well, 
What you see? There's a shack and a grove of trees on the riverbank up ahead. I, I think... Yes, Tonto. There are three horses in front of it. One of them looks like Victor. Here, look. Uh-huh. Uh, that Victor. It must be the hideout. And that's where Dan is. Uh, here, glasses. Uh, now, what we do? Ride back to town. Shouldn't take you long. Give the sheriff this silver bullet. Tell him who you are. And I'm sure you come back here with some men. That afternoon, Dan lay on a cot in the shack while Al, Dave, and Stu played cards. Stu faced a front window so he could keep an eye on the river trail as they played. Yeah, give me one. That's good. How about you, Al? Give me two. One, two. Hey, uh... hey Dave. I was wondering. You reckon anyone might try to trail that kid? No, he wasn't coming from town when we met him. He's coming along the trail from the other direction. Yeah, that's right. Well, I would... Wait a minute. What's the matter? thought I saw something moving on the trail out there when I looked through the window. Oh, gee. Oh, you think somebody's coming? Here, Al. I reckon I better give you a gun now so as you can take that kid out of here and keep him quiet. Oh, thanks, Paul. Take him out the back door and hide him in the bushes along the top of the bluff. Keep that gun on him so as he'll keep still. Yeah, okay, all right. Come on, you. You're going with me. And if you get smart, I'll let you have a bullet. Tough now that you have a gun, aren't you? Get out of here, both of you, and hurry it up. Why'd you send them outside, Stu? It's going to be shooting. And I don't want them youngsters in the middle of it. Yeah, it's a posse, all right. When they get closer, let them have it, Dave. Right. Funny they didn't spread out. And... I'll move you two. A mesh hombre sneaked up on us. Let him have it. No, my arm. I'll get you. Oh, that gun you get it, too. Hey, hey. All right, all right. You win, mister. Oh. Well, mister, looks like you got him ready and waiting for us. Good thing the Indian told me about your mask and all. Glad we could help, Sheriff, but there's one thing more. Eh? Saybrook, where's the boy you had here? You won't find him. Where is he? Oh, my arm, my arm! Al took him out the back way. I suggest that you take over here, Sheriff. I'm going after Dan. We'll bring these two along so as Al can see they're cut. Good idea. Let's get going. Bring him out the back way, men. All right, Sheriff. I don't see them. Dan! Dan! Hey, you, how's Saybrook? We got your father. You better come out of hiding. We'll find you anyhow. Here we are. But if you come out first, I'll shoot Dan Reed. Look, over there on the edge of the riverbank, Al Saybrook has Dan standing between him and us. He's holding a gun on my back. Uh, the Saybrook kid's gone loco. I'll, I'll walk slowly over that way. Maybe I can persuade him to give up. You might as well give up, Al. The law will be easy with you. If you come closer, I'll punch Dan and Reed. The Lone Ranger stopped walking since Dan's life was in danger at the hands of the fear-crazed Al. The two boys were at the edge of the riverbank, just above a deep pool at that point. Al momentarily focused his attention on the Lone Ranger, saying, Get back, mister. I'll plug you first. Dan Reed saw his chance. He ducked and half-turned, grabbing at Al's gun hand. I'll take that gun. Oh, no, you won't. In the car. We're slipping over the edge of the bank. Dan, look out. We'll fall into the pool. Ah! Can you see them? Help! Help My kid, he can't swim. Let's go out to water's edge. Come on. <laughs> Meantime, after hitting the water, Dan let go his hold on Al and struck out for shore. Help! I can't swim. Help me. I'll help you. Don't, don't grab at me. I'll drown to help me. Sorry to have to do this. <laughs> oh. Oh. Get him back to shore. <laughs> hey, look. The kid's bringing Al in. He yeah. ought to forget Al. Save himself. I'll swim out and help him. Hold my guns, Tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dan. You're almost there. Here, let me help. With the Lone Ranger's help, Dan with Al finally reached the riverbank. Willing hands pulled them out of the pool, and they lay Al on the ground. The crowd watched as Stu knelt beside his son. Al. Al, son, it's your pa. You'll be all right. Yes. I had to knock him out, or else be dragged under. Gosh. Uh, pa. How'd I get here? Well, lucky for you, the boy saved your life, Al. Mighty fine thing for him to do, too, after you held that gun on him. You, you mean Dan Reed saved me? Golly, I... I don't know what to say. I'm sorry for the way I acted, but it's too late now. No, it isn't. We can be friends, can't we? Look, son, I, 
I guess I brought you up all wrong. To think that kid saved your life when he could have drowned. What did I say, Brooke? Dan couldn't leave anyone to drown. Well, I reckon if you could be like Dan, I'd... Well, I'd be able to be proud of you. I got a killing against me. Accidental killing, in a way, Stu. You'll get to prison for manslaughter. But someday you'll get out again. And, Paul, when you do get out, I'll be different. Honest. We'll leave now. I'm sure thankful you got a line on Saybrook before he had a chance to form a gang. I'm glad we did too, Sheriff. Out here in the far west, we have enough outlaw gangs to cope with. Well, we'll see you again. Adios. We'll get Al and the other two back to town. Adios. Goodbye, Al. I'll come to see you in town. Goodbye, Dan. I reckon teaching my kid he had to be tough to get along was the wrong slant, Sheriff. Yep, I reckon it was. You were wrong, Pa. Dan isn't tough, but he gave me a beat when I jumped him in town yesterday. He was sticking up for a little boy I was picking on. Oh, gee, I... I wish I could be like him. You can, Al, if you put your mind to it. That boy's had mighty fine bringing up. And he learned being tough don't pay. But knowing how to defend yourself and help another folks always pays off. You see... He learned those things from the mask on bread. Gosh, Sheriff. Just just who is that masked man? Well, the Indian came to town after us. He described the hombre who sent him. And I knew right then that the fellow he talked about could be only one certain man. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.